With less than eight months to go until the election in November, Donald Trump has held a solid and consistent lead over Joe Biden in the national polling over the last six months. However, the general election will not be decided by the national popular vote, but instead by the individual 50 states and the Electoral College. And so in this video, we're going to fill in the 2024 electoral map based on the newest poll conducted in all 50 states. We will begin with Washington, move our way down the west coast and complete the western half of the US before moving to the east and then down south. So starting off with the state of Washington, 12 electoral votes, Biden is already off to a poor start. This is a state he won by 19% in 2020. Four years later, his lead has been cut in half. Joe Biden leads by 10%, according to the most recent poll from the state. And so this will make Washington a likely Democratic state. Anything over 12% means it's solid. The likely range is between 5 and 12. Between 1 and 5 is going to be lean. And anything less than 1% will make that state tilt. Moving on to Oregon, 8 electoral votes. Joe Biden is doing slightly better. The latest Emerson College poll has the incumbent president ahead by 15%, very similar to his 2020 margin. In California, Joe Biden won the 2020 election by 29.2%. Fast forward four years, and he leads by just 19 percentage points, according to the most recent poll in the most populated state in the union. In Nevada, six electoral votes. This is our first key battleground state. This is a state that Joe Biden must win if he wants to win re-election. Not because six electoral votes is a lot, but because if Donald Trump can win Nevada, it is very unlikely that Biden will hold on to many other states that won him the election four years ago. States like Arizona, Georgia, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. So in Nevada, the latest polling is very encouraging for former President Trump, who leads by 10% in the Silver State, according to the latest Emerson poll, as compared to Biden's 2.4% victory here just four years ago. In Arizona, the latest Emerson poll has Donald Trump ahead by 6%. This is another state that Joe Biden won in 2020 by a narrow margin. This was actually the second closest state in the union. Joe Biden won Arizona by 0.31%. The only state that was closer was Georgia that went to Biden by 0.24%. And a loss in Arizona is pretty much expected at this point for Joe Biden. His popularity has gone from an approval rating of 52% at the beginning beginning of his term, now all the way down to 37%, while Donald Trump's favorability has remained the same throughout that period. And when you look at just how narrow this margin was for Biden in 2020, it is very unlikely he is going to win the state again. Joe Biden's only pathway to re-election right now goes through the Midwest, and we'll cover those states very shortly. So Donald Trump leads by 11 points in Arizona. This would be a major victory, a state that he won back in 2016. In Colorado, things are looking bleak for Biden as well. 10 electoral votes, a state that elected him by 14 points. This was a solid state in 2020, but now in 2024, Joe Biden leads by a mere four percentage points according to the latest poll just four percent in a state he won by well over double digits last time in New Mexico, five electoral votes, six percentage points is the margin that separates Biden and Trump. This poll was conducted by public policy polling, and New Mexico now seems to be slightly more blue than the state of Colorado. And in Texas, we have 40 electoral votes. According to the latest poll, Donald Trump leads by nine electoral votes, very similar to his margin from 2016. That margin did go down four years ago in 2020, but it should go back up considering his popularity and 40 electoral votes. That is a huge prize for the former president. In Utah, Trump only leads by 8% according to the latest poll. Utah has not always been the most solid state for him. If you go back to 2016, Evan McMullen won 21% in Utah. Donald Trump did not get to 50%, and Hillary Clinton almost lost the state. So Utah is a state that generally does prefer independent candidates, and it is a state where RFK Jr. may have a significant impact. In these heartland states here in the middle of the country, Donald Trump is going to win all of them by a solid margin. 
in Idaho, the former president leads by 29%. In Montana, by 20%. In Wyoming, this is the most Republican state in the country. Donald Trump leads by 53 points. In North Dakota, that margin is 37. 29 in South Dakota. All of these polls so far have been conducted by Emerson College. They've been doing a lot of polling recently, which is why those are the polls that will be featured the most in this video. In Nebraska, Donald Trump leads by 18% according to change research. This is the at-large vote. We do not have any polling from those three districts, and we're going to go over all of the states and districts where we do not have polling from yet at the end of this video, but there really are not very many at all. In Kansas, Donald Trump leads by 16% and by 28% in the state of Oklahoma. Moving on to the two non-continental U.S. states, Alaska and Hawaii. We do not have polling from Hawaii, but we do know that Joe Biden is not popular there, especially among members of his own party. 30% of them voted uncommitted in the Democratic caucus just a few days ago. Joe Biden, who basically ran against himself, only won 66% of the votes. So we do not have any polling to categorize Hawaii, but it's definitely not looking too good for the incumbent president in a state that he won by 30 points in the previous election. In Alaska, Donald Trump leads by 8% according to Alaska survey research. This is the premier pollster in Alaska. Donald Trump is a heavy favorite here. This poll was conducted quite a while ago, so he's likely doing better than what this poll suggests, but it is a victory for the former president nonetheless. Now, before we move on to the Midwest, which is not only the most politically charged, but also the most politically important region of the country, especially in 2024, I'd like to introduce you guys to Ground News, an app and website that shows you exactly how the news media is covering different topics, giving you a full perspective of what's really going on. On the dedicated 2024 election page, we can dive into the candidates' issues and coverage of this key election. Something I really like is a blind spot feature, which lets you see the political bias and how the news is being reported. Let's take a look at this story about the father of a Marine killed in Afghanistan being arrested after shouting at Biden during the State of the Union. On Ground News, I can see this story has been covered by over 40 sources, but only 25% of them lean left, which means if you're only reading left-leaning sources, you might miss this story altogether. If I scroll down, I can see every article about this topic and compare headlines, as well as the political bias, reliability, and ownership of each source. As the media becomes increasingly polarized, the work that Ground News does is only becoming more critical. Go to ground.news slash PA to check it out. You can subscribe through my link for as little as $1 a month or get 30% off unlimited access to the Vantage subscription, which is what I use. Now, coming back to the map and the Midwest, this is a region that's changed a lot over the last few election cycles. Just look at the map in 2008. Barack Obama wins the entire Midwestern region. In 2012, he loses Indiana. But in 2016, this is where that big shift occurs. Donald Trump wins Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, as well as flipping Ohio and Iowa. These three upper mid Midwestern states that made up the blue wall had not voted red since the Reagan era. And in 2020, Joe Biden was able to win them back, but by very narrow margins, and he has to win them if he wants to win the election in 2024, which is why this region is so important. So starting off with Minnesota, a state that hasn't voted Republican since the 1980s, we have a state that is currently expected to vote for Joe Biden by a margin of just four percentage points. This is very, very close and well within the margin of error. Donald Trump is in the running in the state of Minnesota. Minnesota, it is very likely that he wins this state if things continue to go the way they have, with Joe Biden's popularity continuing to slip. In Iowa, for the first time, the polling shows a solid margin for Donald Trump. Donald Trump leads by 15%, according to the latest Des Moines Register poll. This is the premier pollster in the state of Iowa. The state of Iowa is now a solid blue state after Donald Trump flipped it by an 8.9 point margin in 2016. If you go back to 2012, I mean, this state voted for Barack Obama by 5.8%. This would constitute a 20 point swing if Donald Trump is able to win the state by 15 points this November. Up in Wisconsin, 10 electoral votes, a must-win state for Biden, but unfortunately for him, 
Donald Trump leads by 4% in the latest Emerson College poll. According to Emerson in their latest Illinois poll, Joe Biden only leads by 10% in the state. Illinois is not even a solid Democratic state anymore. I mean, just compare this map to what it looked like four years ago. Washington was a solid state. Colorado was solid. Illinois was also solid. And there are many other northeastern states that are no longer going to be solid for the Democrats in this election. Up in Michigan, 15 electoral votes, another state that Biden has to win, and once again, Donald Trump leads by 4% in the state. Trump did lead by a larger margin a few months ago, especially at the beginning of this calendar year, but he is still holding strong in a state that Biden won by three points in 2020. Out of all three of the Midwestern states, Michigan has consistently been the most liberal over the last few election cycles in 2016. It was the one that Hillary Clinton came closest to actually winning despite losing all three of the blue wall states. In 2012, Obama won Michigan by 10 points and by a solid 17 point margin in 2008. That's just how much this state has shifted over the last decade or so. Donald Trump has made a huge difference in the Midwest in a favorable way for the Republicans. In Indiana, 11 electoral votes, the home state of Mike Pence, who Trump will almost guaranteed to not be running with, Donald Trump leads by 21% in the Midwestern state of Indiana, and in Ohio, 17 electoral votes. It's very close to being solid. The latest Emerson College poll shows Trump ahead by 11%, barely missing out on being solid for the former president for the first time. And finally, in Pennsylvania, 19 electoral votes, another big state. Now, this is Biden's birth state, a state that he really needs to win if he wants to win the election. Joe Biden has no pathway to 270 without Pennsylvania, but unfortunately for him, just like in Michigan and Wisconsin, Donald Trump is the leader in the state. According to the latest Morning Consult and Bloomberg poll, Trump leads by 6%, which means that Pennsylvania is a likely Republican state. The same status as New York, a state that Joe Biden currently leads by 10%, according to the latest Siena College poll. 10 percentage points. I mean, compare this to 2020 when Joe Biden won the Empire State by 23% after Kathy Hochul's disaster in 2022 following Andrew Cuomo's resignation. The state of New York simply hasn't been the same. It is no longer that solid blue stronghold that it once was. In Vermont, the most Democratic state in the country, Joe Biden leads by 31%, but he only leads by 3% in New Hampshire. This is another state, just like Minnesota, that Donald Trump can really win. If you go back to 2016, Hillary Clinton wins New Hampshire by 0.37%. What's more is that in this same poll, Nikki Haley actually beat Joe Biden. Joe Biden has a weakness in New Hampshire, and Donald Trump could exploit that and actually flip the Granite State for the Republicans for the first time since 2000, when George W. Bush was first elected. Up in Maine, we have probably our most surprising results so far. Donald Trump leads by 6% in the state as a whole. The last time that Maine went red was 1988, when Michael Dukakis lost to George H. W. Bush. In the first district of Maine, we have Joe Biden ahead by a measly 8 points, while Trump is ahead by 20% in that second district. In Massachusetts, Joe Biden leads by 20 percent according to the latest poll conducted by Suffolk University. In Connecticut, Biden's ahead by 9, while he's leading by 17 percent in Rhode Island. Now, we do not have any polling from New Jersey, Biden's home state of Delaware, or the District of Columbia, but in the state of Maryland, we see that according to the latest poll conducted by Emerson College, Donald Trump is behind by just 15 points in a state that he lost by 33 in the previous election. In Virginia, Joe Biden only leads by 4%, and that makes him very vulnerable in the Commonwealth. Just a year after he was elected in 2020, Glenn Youngkin, a Republican, won the governorship. And if Donald Trump wants to flip any states he didn't win in the last two elections, of course, Nevada is first, but he can also win Minnesota, New Hampshire, Maine, and Virginia. These states, which are pretty solid for Biden in the last election, are now up for grabs, and they're in the running to be a potential flips for the former president. Donald Trump leads by 37% in West Virginia. This is the second most Republican state in the country. He's ahead by 28 points in Kentucky, by 18% in Missouri, by a margin of 32 in Arkansas, 
15 in Louisiana. Donald Trump leads by 26 points in Tennessee. He's up by 18% in Missouri, and he leads by 25 percentage points in the state of Alabama. And now we have just four more states left. Donald Trump leads by 14% in North Carolina. Things are not even funny anymore. This is 10 times his margin of victory in 2020. Trump won the state of North Carolina, the Tar Heel State, by 1.3% last time. He is now head by 14%, significantly larger than his 2016 3.7% victory. Donald Trump is going to win North Carolina. It is not even being pulled that much because it is simply not going to be competitive. The margin he has in North Carolina is the same 14-point margin that he holds in South Carolina, according to the latest Emerson College poll. While in Georgia, according to Morning Consult and Bloomberg, Donald Trump leads by 7 percentage points. This is another state that that he lost in 2020 after Joe Biden flipped it and a state that Republicans haven't lost for two decades going all the way back to 1992. That was the last time that a Republican did not win Georgia before Biden's victory in 2020. But in 2024, it looks like that victory for Democrats is going to be short-lived as Trump is going to easily take back the peach state. And finally, in Florida, 30 electoral votes. This state isn't even that relevant anymore. It was very closely looked at in 2020, 2016 as well, 2012, 2008. I mean, this state has always been close, even when Obama won by big margins nationally. I mean, even 2004, 5% was considered a pretty big margin. To 2000, the state was decided by a margin of 0.009%. So Florida has always been the center of political talk for decades now. But going into 2024, that simply isn't going to be, be the case. Florida is now a Republican state. Donald Trump leads by 11%, just one point off from it being solid. And now to finish off the map with the states where we do not have polling from, we're going to fill them in based on how they're overwhelmingly likely to vote. Trump is going to win the entirety of Nebraska, while Joe Biden will pick up the states of Hawaii, New Jersey, his home state of Delaware, and the District of Columbia. So based on the newest poll from all 50 states, Trump is currently winning the 2024 election with 315 electoral votes to Joe Biden, who trails with 223, and Trump is currently on track to flip the states of Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and most surprisingly, Maine.